Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to scene three of episode 30 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you again today from YouTube. And what I will do after I've just made sure that we are all systems go here on the old tablet, what I'm absolutely going to do straight away is to start by smelling a perfume. And it's going to be one of these. Today's brief episode is going to be all about Armani Privé. And I would like to start straight away by spraying this particular one, uh, which if you're familiar with Armani Privé, you are very, very likely to know this particular scent from them. This is the Bois d'Ancens. Um, I never know, you know the usual rule that in French you, you quite often don't pronounce the last letter, but there are some words where you do. I, I think encens as an in incense is just encens, and I don't think it's bois d'encens. Well, somebody somebody can tell me, but or I can just look it up on Google Translate. Anyway, this is incense wood, or um, the the incense of wood, I suppose, or wood made of incense uh, from Armani Privé. And once we've taken a sniff of this, I'm sure it will actually help me find a very very calm place so that I can. Um, talk to you about this collection in in a, in a manner that it is as far removed as it could possibly be from manic now oh, I smelt this for the very first time only a few weeks ago and I can genuinely and honestly say to you that it was love at first scent then a bit of an easy sell for me because I do love um, pure incense perfumes but they're not all that easy to do. And this is, this, is, this, is, this is, without question, one of those instant Catholic church in a bottle incense compositions. Can we just take a moment for me to sort of pause and relax? Not, not that my childhood was particularly um, you know, marked by trips to Catholic churches. It's... D th those of you who um, like incense perfumes or enjoy incense perfumes will no doubt be well aware of Avignon from Comme des Garçons, which, which is quite rightly, I suppose, held as the, uh -huh, the holy grail of, of pure incense perfumes. Uh, Bertrand Duchaufour made that for Comme des Garçons, and it really, really does take some beating because it manages not only to present a very, very realistic, photo real, church real, ecclesiastically real experience, expression of incense burning in a church, but it, it's also so nuanced because it's got the kind of mineral facets. So you imagine, you imagine the 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 stone, the 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 mineral quality of an old Gothic church. You know, there's nothing modern about the church in Avignon. Um, you imagine you, you've got that kind of slightly lemony quality that you get in the incense and, 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 it, and it is fantastic but it doesn't last terribly long uh, because incense notes are difficult to, to make long-lasting and so, so you, everybody else is or, or me anyway we're always sort of on the search for the, the perfect long-lasting incense perfume um, and it, there seems to be a particular thing with incense notes that the, the, you can make them realistic but for technical reasons you then can't make them long-lasting and the more long-lasting you make them the less realistic they become. Um, but this one I have to say, the Bois d'Ensemble from, from Armani Privé could well be up there. Other ones that come to mind are the Incense Extreme from Andy Tower. I really really love that one. That one kind of goes for the longevity. Um, Sahara Noir, Sahara Noir from Tom Ford, ridiculously, insanely, inexplicably discontinued. That one really should have been a private blend, probably. That is, it, it, it probably was way too out there for a mainstream scent. That's a fantastic incense perfume, but that really plays a lot on the resins and the balsams in the base, and is quite animalic and funky. I mean, what can I say about the Bois d'Ensemble? It's, it's more Middle Eastern, um, I suppose, than than the Avignon. There is something that is very European Catholic Church about the Avignon. This one uh, supposedly contains a note of um, 
Somalian sense, which maybe gives it that um, Eastern feel. And it's more streamlined, maybe it's a bit less complex than the than the Comme des Garçons, which isn't a criticism because simplicity in perfume is a is an attribute as well. It, it's, it's quite a feat to make something simple without it being simplistic. But it's it's got and, and maybe maybe it's maybe the fact that it's less complex highlights the difference that you sometimes get between Italian perfumery and French perfumery. Um, this this is very Armani. If you imagine a classic Armani suit for men, it's it's not particularly fussy. It's quite streamlined. It's quite sharp. Um, it, it's got that kind of purest quality to it, um, and it really, really works very well as an incense and as an introduction to Armani Privé. <laughs> it was pretty wonderful. So at this point, let me say why I've chosen to um, to look at Privé today. We'll smell at least one more, perhaps two before the end of the episode. Looking at comments, um, I have got here, Adam says, super long lasting hardcore incense. Um, oh, 3rd April 1968 by Rundholt. Oh, I don't know that one. I will have to check it out. And oh, hi, by the way. Hi to you as well, Adam. So. After having that initial sniff, thank you very much for tuning in to scene three of episode 30 of Love at First Scent here on YouTube, hopefully with no technical issues. You know what, to do with technical issues, I don't know if any of you out there have seen these um, cinema events where, where um, theatres in, in the UK, and, and not just in the UK, broadcast a play live. Yesterday, Madame Persilaise and I went to watch Gillian Anderson in the London stage version of um, All About Eve as in we went to the cinema to watch the live stream. And even this live stream had its audio and video out of sync. So I thought, okay, well, if the National Theatre can't even get this right, then me with my little home camera setups and home internet, maybe I shouldn't complain too much. But, but it was frustrating. Um, yesterday's broadcast went off without any technical hitches. Let's see what happens today. The plan for tomorrow is to go out on YouTube again at 2 p.m. with the next episode of with the next scene of episode 30 of Love at First Scent. So 2 p.m. UK time, which uh, will be 9 a.m. New York time and 5 p.m. Dubai time. And somebody says, flip me. I saw that too last night. Well, there you go. We were there with Gillian together. Um, we won't talk about that too much. I think I was impressed with the play and I was impressed with the performances, but I'm still, I'm yet to be convinced by this experience of going and watching these things in the cinema. But anyway, put that to one side. And Iris and Forever Fragrant Kids say hi and hello back to you as well. Please, please, please send happy and good thoughts that we won't have any technical issues today. So Armani Privé, why Armani Privé? Um, it, it's, it's a luxury range or an exclusive range um, What's a gink amola? <laughs> is that some kind of spell? <laughs> some kind of good spell? Thank you very much. If it is, if it if it's some kind of Harry Potter reference, it'll go because I I I don't know very much about Harry Potter. Um, it it's it's an exclusive range, as you know. Almost every single brand out there has an exclusive range in addition to its mainstream range, and it's an exclusive range that's been around actually, I think, for at least fifteen years. It may be celebrating its fifteen year anniversary um, this year. And yet, it has always somehow been under my radar. Now, I don't pretend to be able to smell every single thing that's out there that, that is released because that would be impossible, but I kind of think I have a fairly good handle on what's going on. And, and, and yet these are, had always somehow passed me by. And so I decided it was finally time to make amends and I had a, a, a kind of quick introduction to a lot of them at the Salon de Parfum on the top floor of Harrods in London. Um, and I have to say that, generally speaking, I was very, very impressed. Now, obviously, when you have as many perfumes as there are in Armani Privé, you're not going to love every single one of them. You may not even like every single one of them. But as a, as a range, as a collective, I was impressed. Um, the, the intention in, in almost all of them was very, very clear. And also, what was very impressive was the fact that they really were quite distinctive. There was 
about, I, I think there were very, very, very few that I could describe as being wan or wishy-washy. We were surrounded by um, all of these blotters as I was doing the smelling. And even though quite a considerable amount of time had passed, it was possible to work out exactly which one was which uh, because they, they, were, they were very clear. They were very clear in their personalities, in, in, in um, I guess, what they were trying to achieve. Uh, and that that that's as 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 good a sign as any that you know you're dealing with a, a quality collection. Um, so I, I I don't know why they don't get as much recognition as, for example, the Chanel exclusives do. Even the Mugler exceptions um, managed to make a bigger splash when they arrived. It it could be it could be you know company policy. It may be that Armani actually want to keep them. A lot quieter and a lot more exclusive than Chanel are doing with their exclusive, than you know Dior are doing with their exclusives. Um, but I have a feeling maybe things might change on that front, and we might be hearing more about them. We might be seeing more about them. A lot of them are made by incredibly um, experienced, talented perfumers. I mean, this one, the Bois d'Encens. I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to check my notes. I'm pretty sure that that is one of the ones, one of two, I think that was made by um, Michel Almarac. Now, where have my notes gone? Have I done something with them? Because I don't want to give you incorrect information. Um, here we go. Ah, I thought I'd had this ready for you people, but um, not as organized as I thought I was. Um, certainly one of the other ones that I love, here we go, is this it? Yeah, uh, the Bois d'Orson was Michel Almarac, and it's from 2004. And uh, in the following year, uh, Michel Almarac also gave them the Queer Amethyst, uh, Amethyst Leather, which is over there, which I also instantly fell in love with because of its incredible contrast between the violet note and the leather note. That's also, also Michel Almarac. Looking down the, the list of some of the other people who've made uh, sense for them, Antoine Maison Dieu, Daniela Andrier, Christine Nagel did one, although apparently that one has since been discontinued. Uh, Nathalie Lorson, Cher Mala Maison Dieu, Olivier Pecheur, Fabrice Pellegrin, Aurélien Guichard. You know, it's like some of the biggest names in perfume as you go through these lists, the, the list. Sophie Labbé, Nicolas Beaulieu, um, Alberto Morias. Um, and I guess, I guess the point of today's show, the ultimate point of, of today's broadcast is if you are uh, one of the people who haven't who hasn't tried these yet, and I suppose if, if you know, then there must be quite a lot of us out there who, for some reason, didn't give this range the recognition that it deserves. If you're one of those people as well, don't don't overlook them. Um, g give them some time. They may be hard to track down. I imagine that they will be somewhere near your um, well, well in, in in the closest Armani boutique to you, and maybe in the equivalent of Harrods, not that there are many equivalents of Harrods, but do check them out. I'd like to read a little bit about the, the scent that I just smelt, the um, the Bois d'Ensemble, because apparently it is actually Mr. Armani's perfume. Now, I don't know how much we believe all of this sort of talk. Uh, it says, Bois d'Ensemble possesses an extremely simplified composition with only five ingredients. Now, I'm pretty sure that Andy Towers' Incense Extreme is also made with a small number of ingredients, a very you know something like seven or nine maybe. Giorgio Armani's fragrance of choice, Bois d'Encens, is a tribute to his childhood memories, an olfactory reflection of hours wild away in Italian churches. Why was he whiling away hours in Italian churches? Never mind. A sensual standoff between the essence and the absolute of incense, sumptuously overtaken by vetiver and cedar for a luxuriously pure woody note. And yes, I would, I would, um, I would agree with that. Somebody's out, Adam saying five notes or five ingredients. The press release says five ingredients. So that's what they're saying. And then a quote from Mr. Armani. I am a man who likes simple food. Great quality pasta with olive oil and a tomato sauce cannot be bettered. If the ingredients all work together, you do not need to get complicated in the kitchen to produce something so delicious and close to perfection. Okay, maybe we won't read about his 
pasta fetish. Um, this was my fragrance. The perfumers wanted to make the mixture more complex as it had only five ingredients, even though they were ingredients of the most exquisite quality. I think they felt guilty as they confessed that this version had taken only two hours to mix. Mind you, I believe it, and that, that, that kind of alchemy, that kind of magic does happen in perfumery sometimes. So I told them to go away and come back with, a, with alternatives with more ingredients, but never to lose the essence of the original. After a year of bringing me their ideas, some 80 new versions, they relented. I felt like an emperor in a fairy tale being brought offerings from far and wide, searching for the perfect juice or potion, but ultimately we had already found it. The original version could not be bettered, as it had the magic accord. I now carry this fragrance with me at all times in a small spray. I know that a strong oriental like this is not on trend at the moment. I, I don't know when he wrote this, so I don't know what, when, what he means by it at the moment. But I've never much cared for following what others are doing. However, my own very unscientific research, spraying friends and strangers alike, has led me to believe that this is a very seductive scent. People really do like it. I confess happily that of the four Armani Privé fragrances in my collection, so, so this is going back quite a bit, okay, because I think he's got a little bit more than four now. Bois d'Ancien is my favourite. I wear it nearly every day. Sign, Giorgio Armani. Well, thank you very much, Giorgio. If that story is true, thank you very much for sticking to your guns and making um, Michel Almarac stick to his guns as well. Mind you, he's a, Michel Almarac is a bit of a whiz with, um, with incense as well. Right, I have missed a few comments, I think. Please keep them coming, by the way. The thing about these short episodes, by the, I, I would like some feedback, people, on whether you have enjoyed the shorter episodes. Because from my perspective, it just feels as though they take a little bit longer to get into a groove and for us to get a conversation going. It's almost as though before you've, by the time you've all tuned in, I'm already sort of saying goodbye. But anyway. Um, uh, oh yes, says, glad to catch you live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, at work though, so can't turn on the sound. <laughs> Naughty thing. Well, come back later. I don't think YouTube does instant subtitles yet. Uh, Oda Berlin says, did like the Myrrh Imperial one. Yes, and I think I smelt that as well. And I remember thinking it was a pretty good Myrrh scent. So yeah, I think I'm with you on that one if we're thinking about the same one. Um, Adam says, uh, it reminds me a lot of Avignon. Yeah, absolutely. But it's less sweet. I found Avignon way too vanillic. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I never think of Avignon as being sweet particularly, but okay, good point. I shall smell and, and, and see what I think. And Forever Fragrant Kid is already answering to what I just asked. Thank you very much. I like these, but love when you can chat longer. I know, there's, I mean, pros and cons, right? At least we can focus on one brand and, and, and put something out there. But the, the, the other ones feel a little bit more like I'm hanging out with you guys and we're just having a bit of a chat and go off, going off on tangents. By the way, appropriately enough, for tomorrow's broadcast, which as I said is 2 p.m. Um, 2 p.m. UK time, I were, I'm going to try the two new releases from Parle Moi de Parfum, which of course is the brand um, founded by Michel Almarac and his sons. And I wanted to do those two because I, I can't wait to smell them. I, I, I've been, you know, I've received the samples a few days ago and I can't wait anymore. I need to find out what they're like. Forever Fragrant Kid says, yes, I know, it's, right? It just feels like feels like the party's over as soon as it's begun. But fine, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure the, this sort of format suits some people. Um, Dream of Me No More says, I'm way too Protestant for straightforward incenses. <laughs> we'll come over to the Catholic side then. And Adam says, off topic question, do you have the new Guerlain scent? Queer Intense, no, sorry. I'm, I'm aware of it being out there. I've seen the bottle. I think it's a brand bottle. I've, I've seen it online, but no, perhaps I'll be able to get a sample soon. Right, we should smell another one. I do love the, the amethyst leather, but I've already said that. I'd like to present this one as well. It's called Bleu Lazuli. They've got at least a couple of bleus. This is Bleu Turquoise, Bleu Turquoise Blue. This is Lazuli Blue. Um, it is quite, you know, the, the presentation is, is classy and elegant as you'd expect for Armani. Now this one I have smelt before so this isn't, you know, this is going to break my love at first scent rules but I was impressed with this one. There you go. That, that, that's, that's quite a neat reveal. I do, even though I'm not a packaging freak, I do like a box that lets you have a, a, a classy, smart reveal. And nice colour as well. Oh, somebody's, oh, it's Forever Fragrant Kid. I used to have Queer Amethyst and Jade. <gasps> Did you give them away? 
did you not like them enough to keep them? Mind you, I don't blame you because you probably have quite a lot of perfumes in the collection. So, Bleu Lazuli, we'll finish with this one and then I shall leave you in peace. Um, I'm curious to know now, who was it? Oh, somebody, hang on, I think I missed a too short to catch you live, says Ode de Berlin. Oh, I see, so what do you mean that, you, you know, you kind of want to make the commitment to the live thing if the broadcast was a bit longer? Okay, I, th I think I'm, I think I get you. Um, was it, who, who said that they went to watch the, oh yeah, Paloma King. What did you make of the All About Eve? Just, just in a line, tell me, I'm curious. This is Bleu Lazuli, and I, I enjoyed this one because I thought it was a very, very good take on tobacco. Uh, Adam says, have to go. Thanks for the stream. Bye bye. Thank you very much for tuning in. Catch the rest of it later. And Forever Fragrant Kid, they were great, but yes, big collection. Didn't wear them often enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I think, you know, probably a lot of us in, are in that position. So Bleu Lazuli to finish with. Um, where shall I pop that? Should we put that there? Is that going to... Does that, does that mess up the symmetry? Maybe slightly. Oh, this was... But I, I'll tell you what's interesting about it, because I've been trying to put my finger on what it is about the opening that I find intriguing. And I think it's the fact that even though you know that the, to, the, the tobacco base is there, you can, you, you can detect it straight away, and you know it's, it's going to head in the direction of a tobacco perfume, there's a very, very, very well-judged sweetness at the top. Almost, almost like the sort of boiled sweets sweetness, you know, the ones that are sold for some reason, which I've never been able to understand, as, as car sweets, you know, travel sweets. The, 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 and the fact that they're sugar-coated as well, maybe something lemony, definitely something honeyed. Um, and maybe even almost on the verge of minty you know that kind of sucking your sucking your mouth quality which which just makes such a beautiful contrast with with the tobacco which of course is 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 darker and it's interesting that they've put this within a, a sub range that they're calling blue because it actually seems to be so multicolored that there's there's lots going on here. You know, you've got this kind of so I'm, I'm kind of picturing circles within circles of color with the sort of brown of the tobacco on the outside, but then of course tobacco leaves before they're dried are quite green, and you get that, and you get the kind of yellow of the lemony citrus sweets, and the sugariness itself makes me think of something red and cherry like. It, it. If if we go with the with the with the lazuli part of the name and the fact that it's a precious stone or a semi-precious stone, it does seem to catch the light in lots of different ways and present lots of different facets and colours. I was really really taken with this, and again, this was one of the ones that made me think, why didn't I know this stuff? Why why you know why wasn't I aware of it before? I I don't think I have a release year for this one, or maybe I do actually. Hang on, uh, there we go. Uh, Bleu Lazuli is one of the newer ones. It was released last year, and the perfumer is Pascal Gorin. Official notes are things like cardamom, so maybe that coolness that I'm detecting comes from the cardamom. Um, plum, definitely a kind of fruity note there. Jasmine, and then tobacco honey in the base. So, yes, all of that I'd agree with, but it doesn't really give you the effect. It, it's it, it, it's like being drawn into... You know what it's making me think of? And, 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 and we'll finish with this. this is, it's making me think of scenes in Martin Scorsese's film version of The Age of Innocence. There are some fantastic interior scenes in there. I mean, there are some lavish, grand interior scenes, but there are also very intimate interior scenes there. Let me know if you've seen that film. Uh, of men sitting in quiet rooms, smoking, um, and having having some, you know, alcoholic beverage, perhaps a whiskey or a brandy or something, and talking about very, very heavy, important, significant, potentially scandalous subjects away from the women, of course, because that's how it would have happened in, you know, in the world of, of the Edith Wharton story. 
And the way that Scorsese has filmed those sequences, there aren't many of them in the film, but, um, but, but they do stand out. Is there something about the, the coils of smoke hanging in the air? There's something about the browns, the, the, the opulence of the interiors. There's something about the characters' costumes that really pulls you into the scene. And, and that'll, you know, that'll be to do with the cinematography, etc., etc. But this has got that quality. So it's got the sort of refinement and the elegance that you would want from Armani that you have in that beautiful Edith Wharton world. But it's also got this magnetic quality with just a hint of danger. And, and those are the most dangerous scenes in, in the Scorsese film. Because you never quite know where they're going to go and you never quite know how they might end. Forever Fragrant Kid says, yes, like that film. I, I, I love the movie. One of my favourite, favourite films of all time. Um, so yes, it's a kind of sweet danger, seductive danger. Okay, so I think it's time to leave you in peace. Thank you very much again for tuning in. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thumbs up, etc. appreciated. Uh, the video will be linked to on Facebook as well, so please um, leave comments, ask questions. And don't forget, tomorrow, 2 p.m. UK time, when we will be looking at the brand new releases from Parlez-moi de Parfum. Until then, be good. Take care.